Good evening, good evening. We welcome you to Kingdom View. I am Sonia Chambers, and we're just going to wait for each and every person to get on. So get on worshiping, we'll get on praising, we'll get on magnifying the Lord. We want to give Him honor, we want to give Him glory, we want to give Him praise. Hallelujah to His name. He's King, and He's Lord, and He's Master, and He's Savior, and we just worship Him tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Good evening, Minister Susan. Welcome, welcome to Kingdom View, where we get to see a better view of ourselves. Hallelujah. Just start worshiping and praising him, giving him honor, giving him glory, giving him praise. Good evening, Sister Daisy. Good evening, good evening to all. Just come on in, just worshiping. Hallelujah. We give you honor, God. We give you glory, we give you praise, we magnify your name. There is none like you, O oh God, in all the earth. So we worship you, King. Hallelujah to his name. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, we worship him this evening. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy to be praised. So I'm waving to everyone. We're going to give each and every person a, a little chance to get on. It is the last day in July. How did that happen that seven whole months have com been completed? We're going into August 1st tomorrow and we got to get excited because the number eight is a, a number of new beginnings. So we just want to start fresh, right? Let's go into August fresh. We're going to continue to clean up. Amen. We're going to continue to eat better. We're going to continue to exercise. And most of all, we're going to continue to tell others about Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's open up in prayer. Father God, we just thank you and we just praise you at this time. We give you honor, glory, and praise because you are king and you are master. We thank you, Father, that you are not only an external God, but you are eternal. You are everlasting to everlasting. So we worship you, king. We magnify your holy name. So, Father, we thank you that your word is going to lighten our eyes and lighten our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us at this time. And, Father, we thank you that we will not just be convicted, but we will be transformed into the person that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. Amen? So, tonight, the word is split. It's called external, eternal. Right? So it's a split decision on external and eternal. And before I get started on the word, I just want to give you all a heads up because the Holy Spirit's been really working on me in the past couple of days as I hope he's been working on you. And um, for the month of August, I'm going to be doing a series called It's a Wash. So you look out for that. I'll probably roll that out, what that series is and, and what's going to be going on each Saturday night. So a little bit more about that, you know, in the coming week. So external, I'll ask, I'm asking you all a question and I need your help in the chat. Come on, you're going to have to type tonight. Think, tell me some things that you think are external. Type it in the chat and I'm going to call them out. Type them in the chat. I'll give you the chance. Tell me some things that you think are external. And external means to be capable of being perceived outwardly. like something you can see. Something superficial. Tell me some things that you're thinking that are external. Just type one or two things in the comments and we'll call it out. Um, for those who are saying, I don't know what, you know, Pastor Sonia's talking about. We will say, somebody wrote foolish is a, is a, a external thing. The superficial, being foolish. That's different. But I was thinking more on the idea of external like makeup. Something that's superficial, something that you can see on the outside. What else do other people do that is external outside of doing their makeup? Something that you can just see. It's just superficial. You don't have to dig deep. You can just see it. Something else. I'm giving somebody some time to just write one more comment and then we'll get started. What's external to you? Think about it. Makeup. What do, we, what do people look at when they see you? You know, when you're walking and something like Clothing, right, external, your clothes, right. What do people look at? Your car, that external stuff. What are they looking at when they see you? Because, you know, we pass people on the street every day. And they look at, right, they look at your shoes, right. P 
people pleasing people. They look at your hair, right? These are the things they start to to look at, like you know, when they when they see you. So one of the things, and I always used to tell uh, uh, people that I mentor. I see somebody wrote purse. People are always looking at your pocketbook. Who you know, whose initials on it? And I always I tell my I talk to my daughter all the time about this. I usually like a bag that doesn't have too many initials, so I know exactly what is um. Just look at the bag, and it's just say it's a nice bag. It doesn't have to have someone's name on it, cause my it said if you want to put a name on your bag, say Sonia's bag. Put your name in it, right? People look at your body. So these are these external things that people look at. These superficial. Another um definition that they had in Merriam-Webster was not intrinsic or essential. External circumstances. You know, super it, um external stuff is stuff that affects you that's outside of your control as well. So. Initially, I had a scripture, and I still do, so I want to give you the scripture reference. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 6, verse 4, verses 16 to 18. So just keep that in your mind. But right before I came on live, uh, the Holy Spirit just reminded me to just read this story to you all in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And it says, God looks at the heart. And I'm reading it in the message version. So just bear with me because this was like hot off the press. He was just saying to me, uh, you're talking about external and eternal, but I, wanted, I just want you to tell them about external. And I'm laughing at you, Sandy Simone, because she said her external thing is sneakers and she loves sneakers. Amen? So let's look at the scripture first, Samuel chapter 16. And one of the key verses in that uh, chapter is going to be verse 7. So it says, God addressed Samuel. Let me just move my laptop right in front of us so we can look. God addressed Samuel. So how long are you going to mope over Saul, he said. You know I've rejected him as king over Israel. It says, fill your flask with anointing oil and get going. So basically the prophet um, Samuel was supposed to go and anoint a new king. But Samuel was still, you know, kind of leery because King Saul was very tough and strong. So it goes on to say, I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I've spotted the very king I want among his sons. So God is saying, listen, there's a king that I've, I've, I've picked. There's a queen for you women that he's picked, that he's anointed you to do, that he's already set something in order that you're going to have to do. You have purpose. So I'm encouraging you tonight in the name of Jesus to know that you have purpose in every step that you make. So we got to be mindful to be listening to the voice of God in this season. So verse two to three under this scripture says, I can't do that, said Samuel, because Samuel got fearful. He said, Saul will hear about it and kill me. Because here's the thing, King Saul is king now, and now Samuel's going to Jesse's sons to anoint a new king. It goes on to say, God said, take a heifer with you and announce, I've come to lead you in worship of God with this heifer as a sacrifice. Make sure Jesse gets invited. I'll let you know what to do next. And I want to stop right there because sometimes we, um, we always look at the external things, but we have to allow God to let us know what to do next because sometimes you don't know what the next steps are. And I'll just share a story before I continue that I was supposed to be traveling into uh, Georgia in the morning. And the Lord said, stop your steps. I, I, I'm telling you what to do next. And he says, I need you to stay in Florida. So I canceled everything. And one of the things I'll share with you is when you have to cancel something based on what God is saying, he, undo, he, just undo, he undoes it just like when you tie your shoe and then you pull a string. Everything that I did in, in within five minutes, he undid and refunded. So that's when you know God is in charge. When you're seeing that you're doing things in your own strength and you're doing things based on what you think would be a good thing to do because you focus on the external, the superficial, everybody does that. So I should do that. You may run into some difficulty. Amen. So in verse um, four, it says Samuel did what God told him when he arrived at Bethlehem. The town fathers greeted him, but apprehensively, is there something wrong? And verse 5 says, he says, nothing's wrong. I've come to sacrifice this heifer and lead you in the worship of God. He said, prepare yourself, be consecrated, and join me in worship. 
So everybody was worshiping God. He said he made sure Jesse and his sons were also consecrated and called to worship. And one of the things I want to say to you is that when God has something for you, he will make sure you're invited. A lot of the times we look at these external things and we say, I didn't get invited to this event or they didn't remember my name or they didn't call my name. Listen, God knows your name. Today I was talking to a young woman. I said to her, the only view, the only kingdom view that you need is the God's view of you. So we have to get stronger and not focus so much on the external, but eventually we'll talk about the eternal, right? So verse seven says, but God told Samuel, look, looks aren't everything. <laughs> Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. So one of the things is that, that we do that. We look at the external. Everybody's how much you weigh, you know, uh, what's going on with your eye? Are your eyebrows done? Did, what kind of makeup you wear? Is it MAC? You know, what do you have on? And we ask all of these external things and God is looking at something internal so you can get to someplace eternal. Amen? So I'm going to read verse 7. It says, but God told Samuel, looks aren't everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. I've already eliminated him. So even when people look like they're in the running, God has already eliminated certain things out of certain people and certain things out of your life. And you just got to stand still and allow him to do that. Amen. So it said, God judges persons differently than humans do. Amen. Excuse me. Cause I had a little itchy eye today. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face. And I'm and in other versions, it says men and women look at the outward appearance. He said, God looks into the heart. And I wanted to stop right there because that's the key. We're all, a lot of times we're looking at these external things and God is looking at the heart of a person. So we can look at their car and we can look at their, um, their, you know, the money they have, the titles they have, the jobs they have, the positions they have. We're looking at all of these things, but I'm telling you that God is looking at the heart. He is not focused on your external, but he is looking at, at for your eternal life in Jesus name. So sometimes I was looking at the two words and the difference between external and eternal is one letter X. And sometimes you're going to have to take yourself out of situations. You're going to have to take yourself away from people. You're going to have to take your way, yourself away from, a, you may have to transition to a new job. You may have to move to a new ministry. You may have to start, you may have to X yourself out of it and let God jump in because he wants to do something eternal instead of just looking at your external. So eternal means everlasting. Write in the chat, what is, what is things that are everlasting? What is infinite in duration? What is that? Tell me, what is that? What is infinite in duration to you? What's the, what lasts forever? Does anything last forever? We look at um, uh, electronics. I was just looking around this, the, the Standard Bearer apartment here. And I'm like, the, t the refrigerator ain't going to last forever. TVs don't last forever. Washing machines don't wa last forever. Dryers don't last forever. But what lasts forever? Eternal life. So we're going to let that marinate. Your salvation. You accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because God's word lasts. Thank you, Minister Anjali. God's word lasts forever in Jesus' name. His word never goes void. It goes on to everlasting, to everlasting. You can read a scripture one day. And then the next day, you'll find out that it um, it's totally means something totally different to you. But I want to talk to us about this external because a lot of people are struggling with how they look, what they're doing. And listen, God made us in all colors, shapes, sizes, heights, weights. He loves us all the same because he's not looking at us from a position of what is external. He's looking at us eternally. He wants us to accept his son as Lord and Savior so we can, our spirit, not this body, because this flesh is going to go somewhere, right? This, this body is going to go. 
But the, the real you, the you that's inside of you, your spirit, is the place he wants to take to eternal life. So I'm encouraging uh, each and every one of us to don't get caught up in just the external. The enemy has a way to, to, to make us feel that we're insignificant. You know, if you don't look a certain way, if you don't think a certain way, if you don't act. But he, God made us not to be cookie cutter. We, if, if that was the case, remember, this is the father all knowing, all seeing in, in, in full power of everything. He could have made us all robots and he could have all made us accept his son, Jesus Christ, and we would all be saved and there would be nothing else. But he gave us free will. And I'm encouraging each and every one of us tonight that exercise your free will. You don't have to conform to what everyone else is doing. You don't have to say it every, the way everyone else is saying it. You tap into God for yourself and ask him, what is the way that you are supposed to do things? What is it, Father, that you have for my life? What is your plan for my life in Jesus' name? So I'm encouraging us tonight because we get too caught up on the external. We get, we, we, you know, we love the high end. You know, we fix things. We lift things. I, there's a few things I wouldn't mind fixing. But guess what? This is my, this is me. And, and sometimes we fix ourselves in such a way that we end up all looking the same. And God has said, I made them all so uniquely. We have our own handprint. No one can, have, even the twins, they don't have this same fingerprint. But here we are trying to be, uh, you know, streamline and be the same as everyone else. And I'm, I'm freeing someone tonight in Jesus' name. You are a unique individual. You are loved by God. You are perfect in his eyes. You are beautiful. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And I am speaking that into your life even now in the name of Jesus. That depression and oppression is going to come out in Jesus' name. Because you are a king and you are a queen. You are princes and princesses. And you accept that tonight in Jesus' name. And those of us that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are king's children. So externally, we couldn't care if you're from Yale or if you're from jail. If your bank account is at zero or it's at millions and billions. God loves us all the same because you can't take any of those things with you. You can't even take this body with you because the only thing that's eternal is your spirit. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. Because um, it's, a, it's, a, it was, it's an emotional uh, sermon because when the Lord gave me this external eternal, my heart broke because one of my sorority sisters that I pledged with passed away to go to the Lord on yesterday, and I, I said to the Lord, you know, I said, my God, you gave me this word like Tuesday, external, eternal. But I am so um, like concrete and sure who my line sister was, who she served, the power that she, she lived in, so loving, so kind, loved the Lord with all her heart, mind, and soul. And I know now she has a transformed um, body. She's no longer in pain. She accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and she continues to have eternal life. And I'm just so glad about it. I'm so excited about it. You know, there were 43 of us when, um, when um, we pledged together, uh, there's 41 of us, and I just was saying, God, you know, cover my line, sisters. It's not even just about sword. These are my sisters. And I said, Father, take care of them. Cover them. Love them. Put a hedge of protection around them because we're not looking at each other. We're so different externally. We're different with different heights, shapes, we're from different places, different backgrounds. But guess what? That, that same unity that we have in the sorority is the same unity that God wants in the body of Christ. That we can all look different, but we still go into the same place. We all go into heaven. So we're talking about not just external things. We're talking about everlasting things. And I'm talking about having everlasting life by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, Master, and King. And it is painful when we lose someone. But when they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'm comfortable. I'm peaceful. I'm at peace with what's going on. So, Father, you know, I just thank you tonight that you're helping others to, to not just look at their external things, not, not to just look at the, the, the cars they drive and, you know, the venues they rent. And let us not just get focused on the superficial thing because we're just one scroll away of, of being ignored. Because we, all of us have events, and we all have um, friends and fellowships, and there's nothing wrong with that. But guess what? 
These things are external. And God is trying to get you to everlasting. He's trying to get you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And, and nobody likes a fellowship like me. No one likes a celebration. I tell you, I love a celebration. We could just make a celebration. I do it right here at the countertop at the Standard Bear apartment. I'll do it right on the beach. I'll do it at the poolside outside. I'll do it wherever it is. But guess what? Those things are just external to us. My concern is your eternity. Where are you going to be? You know, where's your relationship with Christ? Um, where do you get your advice? Say ouch. Because sometimes we listen to people who aren't even on the same vein as us. And we got to be so mindful to the voices that we listen to. You sit there and watch TV and think that's real life. You listen to a love song, you think that's how relationships go. But it ain't like that. Everything takes work. And every time we look in on the outside, we, we look at what others are doing on social media and we look at the exter external. But guess what? You look at the external, but we done fix the picture about three times to get it right. Because we're looking at the external too. And sometimes everybody kind of gets a little angry at me because I just take a picture. And they go, Pastor, stop taking a picture like that. Or they go, Ma, stop taking a picture. And you got to post that picture. I'm saying, but this is our, li we're living life. This is how we look. But they get upset and say, no, nah, you know, you got my wrong side. They look at, we're looking at the external. But I'm saying God is looking to have you have everlasting life. He's looking at your eternal. So don't let your external, like the story that we just read, where they're saying God is looking at the heart. And now tonight we want to say, where's your heart? Where's your heart related to the Lord? Where's your heart related to your family? Where's your heart related to your spouse? Tonight, I want to pray for the heart because sometimes we can make our whole life look normal. But the heart of man, the, our personal hearts, we're just, you know, it's bleeding. Not, um, not feeling fulfilled, feeling uh, alone, feeling isolated, feeling rejected. We feel abandoned. We feel discouraged. There's so much going on. In our lives. And you know. People look at you externally. Because your, your hair's done. And your nails are done. Because y'all left out nails. You know you got to get your nails done. And they be like. Did you get your feet done? So you got to get the mani. You got to get the petty. You got to get the weave. Or you got to get. um what What's it? Knotless braids. You, you you get it all together. You get the, the. the You can get the red bottoms. I still got black bottoms. I just walk on the shoe. Because it's on the ground. But you can get whatever designer thing you have. You can carry the right purse. And still externally, that looks great. But where are you going to go eternally? And how are you feeling internally? This external to the external. Don't look put together externally and internally you're hurting. And, and some of the pains and the things that we have gone through in our lives, because all of us have a, a backstory. That's why we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, because he can burn away a lot of those pains. As we surrender our hearts and our, our minds to him, as we read his word, as we seek his face by, by prayer and spending time with him, we start to realize that a lot of the things that hurt us years ago and when we were a child and and even things that might have happened to us yesterday, he can, he, he's a comforter. The Holy Spirit is a keeper. So allow God to massage your heart tonight. Don't get so caught up in what's going on externally that you don't, that you don't fight and clean up the stuff that's internal so you can have eternal life. He wants to clean up your heart tonight. And, uh, it just, it just dropped in my spirit related to, you know how when someone's coming over and your house is messy and you just be like, let me throw everything in the closet or let me throw everything in this cupboard and then you make it all look good. But then when you open the closet, things are falling out. This is what sometimes is going on in our hearts. We make it all look good on the outside. But then if you go into us internally, we would, you would see that there are things that need to be healed and things that need to be fixed. And Jesus wants to fix that tonight. He wants to touch your heart. He wants to touch your mind. He wants to touch your relationships. He wants to touch your friendships. 
He wants you to know that you're not alone. He wants you to know that you're, even if your mother and father forsake you, he will pick you up. He want to touch your grieving heart even now in the name of Jesus for those who are going through bereavement. He want to touch your mind if you're feeling oppressed and depressed and rejected and dejected and abandoned. He want to touch your eyes if you can't see and you're having blurred vision. He want to touch your ears if you if you feel like you can't hear and you're, you're suffering from deaf, deafness. He want to touch your body tonight. So just put your hands up wherever you are in your house. Because I'm putting my hands up. Because we're, we're expecting the Holy Spirit to do a work on us right where we are. Because this is the Spirit that moves everywhere and can be everywhere at the same time. So Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you that you don't look on just the external, but you look on us internally and you want to take us into eternal life. Those of us that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, touch each and every person under the sound of my voice. Oh, touch them, God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Touch them in their innermost parts, God. Touch hearts. We don't want to just be an external work where we're shaped the right way, looking the right way, but hurting internally. So, Father, do massage our hearts tonight. Reshape us. Give us hearts of flesh and not hearts of stone. Get rid of our bitterness and our, our anger and our unforgiveness even now. And give us hearts of love in Jesus' name. Give us agape love. So, Father, we just thank you for the transformation. We don't want to just be convicted by the word of God, but we want to be transformed and renew our minds to see ourselves different, to know that externally we can all be looking differently, but you love us all the same. You're a good, good father. You give good, good gifts, and you love us. So, Father, we just thank you for the changing, the, the, the uh, manifestation, the demonstration of the, the, the transformation in people's lives even right now in Jesus' name, God. So, Father, we thank you for touching men tonight. Let them love their wives as, as, as Christ loved the church. We thank you for wives tonight, that they're loving their husbands like never before. We thank you for children tonight, that they, they're submitting to their parents and they're obedient to their parents in Jesus' name. And we thank you that parents are loving their children and not abusing them in Jesus' name. Father, make a shift in our lives right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I, I pray even now, because I take this personal tonight, because it's external to, to, oh God, it's external to eternal, but we're going to work on the internal, God. And how do we work on our internal? By reading your word, by surrendering our issues and our circumstances to you. And Father, I just thank you for even covering my line sisters even now as we're grieving um, the loss of our line sister, that you would just mm, comfort us at this time because we, some of us feel so broken because it, no one knows the day or the hour that you will call us home. So, Father, we just want to surrender to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, uh, you know, I just, it's a sobering night for me because it was just painful to to know that, you know, you know, such a young woman just gone, uh, and such a fighter, you know, just love her, such a fighter. And, uh, I want to encourage you to, uh, if God puts someone on your heart to write them, to pray for them, to call them, do something, uh, exercise yourself. Because one thing I do remember is that at the beginning of the year, um, and sometimes the Lord of, uh, make you do different things and you don't know. And at the beginning of the year, I, w I had such a burden and a heart for my sorority sisters, especially my line sisters and uh, and those that were, you know, close to me. I just had such a burden. I just couldn't figure out what it was. And when I had this burden, the Lord told me, won't you just write letters and send gifts? And, and that's when we were, you know, we were still very, you know, we're, all, we're pretty much a virtual ministry. But, um, you know, just we were giving out virtual gifts and he's like, send the people gifts and so forth. And I just um, remember sending a scripture card to the, my, the line sister that passed. And she wrote me back this letter. And I just, uh, it just touched my heart that sometimes just something simple as sending someone a scripture card. It didn't have any value to it, but it had a lot of value to her. She was so encouraged by, and I'm uh, the word of God. So I'm encouraging you, get your Bible back out. Dust it off. Don't let it just be an external thing that you got on a table or on the side of a bed. Dust it off and open it up. 
and get that external word internally so you can get eternal life. Get back into relationship with Jesus Christ. So God bless you all. I love you all. I'm Sonia Chambers. This is Kingdom View. I am the senior pastor of Standard Bear, New York and Standard Bear, Florida. And I am the apostolic leader of Kingdom Advancement Alliance. And I encourage you, let's get beyond external, clean up the internal so we can have eternal life. So God bless you all and good night.